So finally, I'm super excited. I'm going to show you how to build an application you can deploy to production. So there is the application, and these are the nine features of this application that makes it production ready. I'm going to be showing you how these features play out in the actual application. So let me first log out from my account. And here is a login page. Now the thing is this. Version 1 of Fleet Management System is not actually deployable to production. Version 2 is deployable and I'm sorry I have to stop uh, suspend building version 1 because it's simply not deployable. So there are about 8 features of version 2 that is missing in version 1. 1 is modular design, 2 layout pages and content pages, number 3 reports and chat. I'm going to be showing you these things as well. And we have in-page crowd operation, very important. We also have multi-page crowd operation. Security and role-based authentication now is included in version 2. Improved user details page and load select by select and version 1 questions answered. Let's take the first one, modular design. So I'm going to log in. Now if you look at the sidebar of this application, you can see different sections. This corresponds to the module. What do I mean? It means that each of these sections is a module. This is a vehicles module. And we can also go to the, the HR module. So these are independent applications that are in different modules that can, can actually be detached and attached. So a modular design makes it easy for you to scale your application up or down. So if the user comes or the client says, no, I don't need a help desk, you can simply remove the help desk module. Number two, layout pages and content pages. Now, in version one, we never use the layout page. We actually was writing all our codes in different pages. But in version two, we now have a layout page that contains the layout of this application. And you have to write codes only once and it's gonna reflect in the whole application. So basically, the sidebar, the header, and in fact, the structure of this application is in the layout page. And if you come here, you can see my layout pages here, layout of HTML, this layout page, it contains everything. So we actually have to write very tiny piece of codes uh, in different pages and then use the layout page as a layout. So in this case, it's, it reduces the time we spend writing codes and it makes uh, code, uh, the, the codes you write to be very um, few lines of code for you to achieve something much. Reports and charts. Now, version 1 never included reports and charts. Version 2 now includes reports and charts. So if I go to reports form, of course, reports is another module completely. So you can see it now. Reports department is in charge of handling reports. So if I go to account report, you see a number of the really nice reports. I can, I'll show you how to develop uh, these reports. So this is missing in version 1, and I actually included it here. So I'd like to recommend that if this is informative for you, please subscribe to my channel and also let me know what you expect so that you, I, I can actually know what direction, uh, what improvements to make in this application. Number four is in-page crowd operation. Very important because in the previous class or in version one, we used modal pop-up based crowd operation. Let me just show you the difference between the two. If I go to the HR home, I go to departments now, this crowd operation, of course, crude means create, read, update, and delete. That is the operation you carry out in a database table. This particular table uses a modal pop-up based crowd operation, which we use in version one, by the way, and it requires writing JavaScript codes. Writing JavaScript code is not really interesting. You have to write JavaScript code in different files, and that increases the number of files you have to create. So this is what we did in version one. We use this uh, modal based crowd operation. In version two, we are going to use two more different types of operation. And one of them is in-page crowd. What does it mean? Let me just show you an example. So if I go to HR home, I can go to job titles and you see we have job titles here and you now have the crowd operation is done in page. So if I want to add a new job role, I can now say, for instance, manager and manager and simply save it and it adds to the list. So this is in-page crowd operation. It reduces the amount of JavaScript code you have to write to the barest minimum and that is excellent. 
And now, if you don't want to write JavaScript code at all, we also have the fifth feature called multi-page CRUD operation. I'm going to show you right now. It, it eliminates writing JavaScript code. So let me go back to the HR home. If I go to HR home, or let me use vehicle home this time, and I go to vehicles, and I go to, of course, I, I really love this these images here. Uh, I go to add new, for instance. So this is a new page, which is the add page. It's not in page, it's not a model pop-up, but it's, it's, a, it's a different page now. So if I exit back to the vehicle list, you can also see the edits uh, page. The, I mean, the details page is also very nice. And the same thing applies to the HR. So in the, in the employee files, the same features I have before, I also have it. So you have all these really nice uh, images of these uh, really nice kids here. Okay, so let's continue. We also have security and role-based authentication. This is what I've included in version two. We have it now. So what it means here is that if I log out now, I can log in the, into this application with my account and I'm a super admin. Now there are different roles, for instance, HR, manage, HR admin, account admin, help desk admin. For each of these modules, you have a role so a user with role does, does not have a role for that module, does not have access to that module. So if I go to security now and go to security home, I go to users. Okay, sorry, let me go back to security home and go to roles. Now, these are the different roles in this application. You have user. User is a basic role that have access to the help desk and maybe the homepage. You have HR admin, fleet admin, account admin, admin, super admin. Now, if I go back to the users, you can actually assign users different roles. If I go to my own role, my own user details page, you have my first name, last name, my username, and then you have my roles assigned right here. I'm a super admin. That's why I have access to all the pages of this application. And we have other users as well. You can assign, I can assign myself more roles. I can also unassign roles. So if I go back to the users list, and I go to Hercules. Hercules is just a user. So I can assign Hercules the admin role by clicking on assign and say, okay. So Hercules now have an admin role in this application. An admin user have access to all the modules except the security module because the security module actually has to do with assigning and reassigning roles. And so who has access to the security module is the super admin, which, is, which actually is me. Then we also have improved user details page. So let me show you this improved user details page. I'm going to, I'm going to the HR home. Uh, HR home. So this employees file now. And now I still have the, the pop-ups here, which is okay. But now if I go to the user details, this is the user details page. Now you have a really nice improved user details page. This is what is missing in version one. And if you want to edit this record, record is simply click on edit record. It simply unlocks all the text fields and you, and you can now edit this record and you can actually exit. Another feature I forgot to mention is this breadcrumbs. It's called a breadcrumb because it helps you to know where you are in the list of items on your navigation uh, operation. So like now I'm in edit, I can simply from edit, go back to the list. From the list, I go back to the HR home. From the HR home, I go back to the, to the main page. So if I go to the employees list, from here, I can go back to the HR home. From the HR home, I can go back all the way to the main page. So this is called the breadcrumb. And we also have the load select by select. So it means that when you select a, a, a select an item in a select list, it filters and displays a subsite. For instance, if you want to select the states in a country, you want to use select by select. So if I go to, for instance, to uh, parameters, I go to parameters home and go to locations, and I want to add a new location right now, I simply click on add location. So if I select a country, for instance, Nigeria, the, the list in the states now is filtered to display only the states in Nigeria, all right? 
So these are the basic things, these are the features missing in version 1 and I'm adding it to version 2. And of course, user questions answered from version 1. Okay, there is something else I would also like to mention, just a few important stuff I'd like to mention. What is covered in this tutorial or in this version 2 is basically the same things covered in version 1 plus uh, additional things I've discussed. So if you want to get the asset, simply go to Kyneton the Genius Spring Boot or simply go to KyntonTheGenius.com and you can find uh, you can find a whole lot of things. So from, from this Spring Boot page, you can simply go down to um, complete application with Spring Boot from the scratch. So you can see all the assets you need. You can actually search around. So if you simply go to Google, type kind on the genius and type maybe uh, assets to complete application of Spring Boot or MySQL, you can find the code snippet you need to configure different parts of this application. So if I go to, for instance, the, the first page of the, if I go to the first page, so this is from version one. So this is actually what we are going to cover or what you are going to learn. Java programming, JavaScript, Spring Security, Spring Data JPA, Hypernet ORM, ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping, Time Leaf Template Engine, Bootstrap, and a whole lot of things. So the next thing is, uh, let me just go back to the page. How can you learn? The, the best way to learn is to be persistent. Do not rush. Don't try to cover it in one day or two days. Take it one day at a time. If you encounter a problem, please leave it as a comment for me. I'm going to try to respond. Else, if I don't respond quickly, try to connect with me on a social network profile, for instance, Instagram or Google or Facebook or something. Else, you can also buy me a coffee because that makes it quick for me to actually respond because this actually takes a lot of time for me to do this. And how these courses are arranged, for sure, is arranged similar to version 1, but a little different. In case of version 2, I have prepared the complete course. So in the next following, following this very introductory part, there is setup. That's step 1, part 1. And the courses now are very, very short. 5 minutes, 6 minutes, 7 minutes, very short, really. So. Um, and every day I'm going to be sent introducing the next part. So don't rush. This is very easy now and also takes short time. So in about 20 or, or something lectures or 30 lectures, we are going to complete everything, making this application completely deployable. So what do you have to do now? Please subscribe to my channel. If you want to start with me in Fleet MS version 2, Please also leave me a comment saying I want to join Fleet MS version 2. That lets me to know that you are there or you are with me from the start. If there is a particular aspect of uh, this project you want to learn, for instance, you want to be more clear about Spring Security or maybe relationships with Hibernate, also let me know and specify Fleet MS version 2. And again, please leave me a comment uh, to let me know that you are making progress. Tell me that you are making progress. That kind of motivates me to keep uh, doing these lessons. And secondly, uh, if you have, yeah, this is very important. If there is a question or a comment that is a comment that is a question, if you know the answer, please respond to the user and provide him with the needed help or support. I will appreciate that a lot as that kind of saves my time because there are a whole lot of people who would like to um, uh, like me to give some support. So I'd like to stop here. I'd like to um, give you a thumbs up for being here. I'd like to also apologize sincerely for suspending working on version 1. It's simply not deployable and I can't continue working on it. So I'm sorry if I uh, kept you waiting. However, if you have any questions from version 1, I'm going to also answer it. And finally, Remember, I'm kind on the tech pro and I'm always there for you.